30% of all new cars that drive off the lot are on a lease. Why is that? Hey guys, it's Basic B Rhett. Thanks for joining my channel where we talk about money, what to do with it, and how to make more. Why do people lease cars? Because people are dumb. Because people like making bad decisions. Because people like impressing others that they don't like with money that they don't have. Because people got dumped and they think this dumpster fire of a bad decision will make the other person jealous. Not so they come back. But so they realize the beauty of what they are missing. All right, maybe I'm being a little harsh. It's probably because they like driving a new vehicle or maybe the payments are a little bit lower. So it's cheaper and you're driving around something fresh all the time. But let me tell you this, leasing is the most expensive way to operate a motor vehicle. First off, let's get this out in the air. Why do dealerships offer leases? Because they make money, okay? That's first and foremost why they do it just like any business. If you watched my video on how to buy a car and avoid dealership scams, which I'll put right up here, then you know that the dealership makes more money off of the financing of the vehicle than they do the actual sale of the vehicle. So when you're leasing the car, you're paying for the depreciation of the vehicle plus the interest, which in leasing, they don't use interest, they call it the money factor. And then in the end, you turn it in, if you screwed it up, they charge you for that. If you went over your miles, they charge you for that and then the dealership just goes on and sells the car again for a profit. So they made money off of the interest you paid, plus they're making money off of the resale of the car now. So that's how they do it and how dealerships make their money. But here are a couple of reasons why I don't think you should ever lease a vehicle. Number one, it's not a good deal. You're paying for more than the car is depreciated. Remember, you're paying the depreciation plus the interest rate. They're not gonna lose money on renting you a car. They're not making you a deal. However, Sometimes when you're buying a car, the dealership might be willing to lose money on it. Have you ever noticed that if you're shopping a new vehicle, you might see a couple thousand dollar difference from one dealership to the other dealership? Why is that? The MSRP is set by the manufacturer. So how come this dealership can sell it for this price and this one can sell it for this price? Well, one dealership may be willing to make less or even take a loss if they're within striking range of an incentive from the manufacturer. Meaning if my dealership sells 50 Ford trucks, Ford might give me a bonus for selling 50 Ford trucks this month. Whereas this guy down the street's only sold eight, he's not within striking range of an incentive, so there's no point in him knocking down the cost of the vehicle because he still gotta make money. So in the world of car dealerships, one dealership may be close to snagging an incentive, so they'll start to make really great deals on their vehicles, maybe even to the point that they take a loss because the incentive that they get from the manufacturer will offset the cost of the remaining five trucks that they have to sell. I say all that to make this point. You might get a good deal buying a new car. You will never get a good deal leasing one. Point number two why I think you should stay away from leasing a vehicle is the terms are shady. On a lease, you're essentially borrowing the value of the car and then making payments back in the form of a lease but because it's not a loan, there's no interest rate. If you actually take the time and you convert the money factor of the lease into an effective interest rate that you would had you bought the car, a lot of times you're paying 10 to 15% interest on the value of the money that you're putting into it. Meaning if you bought a $40,000 car, you're gonna put pay the depreciation plus 10 or 15% in interest. Whereas if you bought a $40,000 car, you will, take the depreciation as a hit, but your interest rate is gonna be three to 5%. But again, you can never make those comparisons because with a lease, there's a money factor. There's no interest rate. You have to go and do a bunch of math in order to find, what, find out what the effective interest rate is. And some people who aren't good with numbers really, really get hosed on these deals. Number three reason I don't think you should get a lease is the car dealerships make more money off of leases than they do actually selling cars. The only people who are telling you to get a lease or defending leases when it comes to the math are either people who sell them or people who are too prideful to admit that they made a bad decision. It's not just me. Any financial person out there is going to tell you that a lease is a bad idea. One group of people is telling you one thing, one group of people is telling you another thing. Who's got an interest in convincing you? I get nothing by convincing you. The guy at the car dealership, he gets a lot by convincing you. There's a great Dave Ramsey quote. He says, broke people say how much down, how much a month. Rich people say 
how much? What is this actually costing you? Not how much down, not how much a month, how much? So if you ignored all of that and you still want to lease, there may be a couple scenarios where leasing may be appropriate. If you're loaded making high six, low seven figures, you've got a high net worth, you can afford the abomination that leasing is. So if you want to drive a fresh vehicle every year, you want to do a one year lease, you can afford it. Go ahead. Just know it's not a, it's not a good financial decision, but because of the position you put yourself in, not every decision has to be a great financial one. You've earned that luxury. If you're constantly buying new cars, if you're someone who is turning over a, a new car every year or every two years, it might be worth looking at a lease. The depreciation hit that you, when you drive it back off the lot and then you come back a year later and you turn it back in for the trading value had you bought it, the numbers might work out that it might be better to lease in that scenario than to keep buying new vehicles. So if you're somebody who's constantly gotta be in the newest year of the Chevy Tahoe or whatever your vehicle is, it might be worth leasing. Again, not a great financial move. Terrible if you can't afford it. But, I mean, that's that's an honest justification for it. Some people do lease and, and these might be some legitimate reasons for why they're doing that. They can afford it. It would cost them more to be buying a new car and trading it in every year. And they're not worried about going over on their mileage. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. I gave you my opinion. I'm just some random dude on the internet. But before you do anything, make sure you do your research, you know your numbers, and you know what you want. If you got something out of this video, I'd appreciate the like, subscribe, stay up to date on the channel, and if you wanna comment on a topic you'd like to hear about, I'd love to do some research and figure out some answers for you. Thanks guys.